There is no God, just stupid people. If you don't believe in God, just ask him for some sort of proof. I did, and he proved it to me. Religious people really do have a pathetic excuse for everything. It's amazing how sad many of these comments are, all because you as a mere mortal can't comprehend how God operates. It is sad. These are just some of the hundreds of comments I've been seeing after uploading some content on philosophy of religion across YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. And your discussions have been super interesting to say the least. I've seen a lot of friendly disagreements as well as some heated arguments between believers and non-believers of God and religion. And so I thought it's a good time to introduce you all to Ludwig Wittgenstein, the short-tempered and brilliant philosopher who completely changed the way I think about language and religion. Let's dive into his philosophy philosophies and outlook on things. To understand Wittgenstein's philosophy, we need to start with his idea of language games. According to him, language isn't just one thing with fixed rules and meanings. Instead, it's like a collection of games, each with its own set of rules and meanings. These games help us understand how language works in different situations. Wittgenstein believed that religious language should be seen as part of the language game of religion itself. In other words, it has its own specific rules and meanings that are shaped by the context of religion. This challenges the idea that language is a one-size-fits-all system. Instead, Wittgenstein wants us to see language as something dynamic and contextual. It's like stepping into different worlds where language functions differently in each realm. For example, when I say the word God, a Christian would envision that in their mind a lot differently than an atheist. From the comments I've been seeing, a Christian would tend to view God as an all-powerful, all-knowing and all-loving creator of the world, while an atheist would view God as a magical man in the sky. And so there's a lot of debate between the two that never really seems to come to a conclusion. And that's because the Christian is playing the Christianity game, so to speak, while the atheist is not. By introducing the concept of language games, Wittgenstein pushes us to reconsider the traditional view of language as a universal system. He encourages us to recognize that language is influenced by its context and can vary in its rules and meanings. It's a fresh way of looking at language, one that opens our minds to the idea that language is not fixed, but rather adaptable and diverse. Wittgenstein had this interesting idea about religious language. He said, we can't check if it's true or false using the same methods we use for scientific things, which can be verified through empirical evidence. See, religious statements aren't meant to be judged like facts. Instead, Wittgenstein believed that religious language has its own special way of working. Understanding the context and purpose behind religious language is needed if we want to unlock its meaning. So, we need to understand religious language by considering where and why it's used. Think of each religious statement as a puzzle piece, and all the things people say about religion as the whole picture. To really understand what a religious statement means, we have to look at it in the context of all the other things people say about religion. This way, we can see how all the pieces fit together and appreciate the deeper meanings and importance of religious language. It's like putting together a puzzle and seeing how each piece contributes to the bigger picture. By taking this big picture view, we can unravel the complexities and subtleties that make religious language so meaningful. You see, Wittgenstein had this different way of looking at religious beliefs. He didn't think they were just random or crazy. According to him, religious language actually makes sense within its own special rules. It's like a game, you see. The meaning of religious statements comes from how they fit into the bigger picture of religious talk. It's all about understanding the context and what people in religious communities believe and agree on. Now, this might seem a bit strange compared to how we usually think about meaning. We tend to think that meaning has to follow strict logic, right? But Wittgenstein says meaning can change depending on the situation. It's like what makes sense in one place might not make sense in another, and that's okay. So Wittgenstein reminds us that they have their own kind of meaning and coherence. It's all about seeing the bigger picture and understanding how they fit into the language game of religion. Wittgenstein had this interesting take on atheism too. Instead of just saying, nope, 
to religious beliefs, he suggested a different kind of atheism. It's all about having real conversations and trying to understand the language game of religion. This way, atheists and religious people can talk to each other more respectfully. See, this new atheism goes beyond just arguing and being confrontational. It's about building bridges and finding common ground. Wittgenstein said we need to recognize that religious language is unique and has its own rules. So atheists need to dive into the religious context and try to understand where believers are coming from. This approach helps us see things from different perspectives. It's like finding a middle ground and creating space for meaningful discussions. By acknowledging the importance of religious language and its specific context, this new atheism aims to foster understanding between atheists and religious believers. Instead of dismissing religious claims right away, this approach invites atheists to engage in dialogue and seek mutual understanding. It's a fresh way to approach atheism and promote harmony between different viewpoints. And equally, I think religious people should step into the shoes of an atheist when talking to them to have a deeper understanding of their worldview. So Ludwig Wittgenstein's philosophy offers us a unique lens through which we can examine the philosophy of religion. His ideas still influence how we study religion and think about his philosophy. They open up new paths for us to explore and have interesting discussions. And this is the approach that I take when thinking and talking about topics in philosophy of religion. What are your thoughts on Wittgenstein's philosophy? Let me know in the comments. And if you found this video interesting, hit those like and subscribe buttons and I'll see you again next time.